that gives me a lot of time to pick the brain of the wonderful criminal defense attorney Josh Schiffer joining us live via Skype. Josh, always great to see you have your insight and expertise. Uh, this one is a doozy. So uh, just give me your take, if you would, please, on what we've seen so far this morning as both sides opened up the case. Good to see you, Julie. And this one really is an eye opener. I have done this work for a long time, and I can't remember many crime scenes that have this level of just grisliness attached to it. It truly is a horror show. Uh, I think one of the quotes from an investigator is walking into the gates of hell. Um, this case, I don't think, asks a lot of questions about who done it. As the defense came out, they didn't really put forward one of the classic defenses. It wasn't me, I didn't do it, he needed killing. What we see here is almost a pro forma of, of this is how the state should try a case. Everybody's gonna watch everything very carefully because I feel the state and defense have almost tacitly agreed that a conviction is going to flow from this. And therefore, it's going to be the appellate lawyers who are going to provide this gentleman the best remedies for the actions he so pretty clearly took. Uh, and that's, that's terribly sad. On top of that, and compounding it, is the idea of this is a major criminal trial which implicates all of our constitutional issues at the beginning of resumption of court due to COVID. In almost every state in the nation, we've been shut down. And there are these giant questions about how are trials going to take place? How are we going to pick fair juries? What is the effect of social distancing going to be on juror operations, on the smooth and efficient management of trials? And I just, I see this as almost a grand experiment with someone who pretty clearly has a very weak defense. Um, everybody's going to be watching this one closely, not just in Tennessee, but around the nation. You are right about that, my friend. I want to play a clip now from a reporter in that area in Tennessee. Her name is Jamie Satterfield. We've had her on Court TV before for other cases, and she's been really following this case closely since its, in since its inception. Excuse me. And in this clip, she tells us about her take, so to speak, on the defendant. Let's watch. This is a guy who's very intelligent. He's very engaged in his defense. Uh, when his attorneys won't file a motion he wants filed, uh, he files it and get, and essentially let the judge let him uh, make his own case on a, a motion a couple of days ago. So uh, that's what's most unusual to me about this, is it's hard for me to look at uh, uh, a young man, he's you know, 30, in his 30s, but who's so intelligent and, and very aware of what's going on but, but rather emotionless about what he's accused of. Yeah, he seems like a real piece of work. Uh, Josh, I want to tap into your expertise. When you have a client that kind of goes rogue, so to speak, and doesn't want to listen to the best advice that you're giving them, how do you handle that as a defense attorney? You know, I, I literally was dealing with this today. Anytime you're working with someone who is charged with crimes or involved with the legal system, you've got to take the whole person. That includes any issues such as substance abuse or mental health. And we as lawyers have very strict ethics of what we are allowed to do and what we're specifically kept out of or prevented from doing. Um, this gentleman, as far as all the information I've seen, is fully and completely competent. He also was successful in retaining his original lawyers. The lawyer, the lead lawyer, is the former public defender who had to ask for and received a special dispensation from the court to continue being uh, his public defender, even though the public defender had returned to private practice. So everybody's very cognizant that this case is going to be watched by everyone. It is guaranteed to go to an appeal. There is no question about it. And so that chess game 
that three-dimensional chess game, you're not trying this case necessarily for a jury. You're trying this case for the appellate courts, uh, specifically the, the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court, to see how we reality test our ability to try cases in the time of COVID. There are a lot of people that can already come up with arguments that this jury's not going to be fair because I'm certain there were jurors that weren't participating or weren't allowed into the process because of the outstanding health emergency. And that makeup of the jury, that's a great way to invalidate the due process. Josh Schiffer, love that you mentioned possible appellate issues. I want to pick your brain about that, but we have to take a break. So stay right there. I want you to stay with us at home when we come back. Lots more live coverage of Tennessee versus defendant Joel Guy Jr.